How's it going guys? I'm Shifty Cow, and in today's video we're going to be talking about the muzzle attachments in Rainbow Six Siege. So primarily the two new ones, the muzzle brake and the extended barrel. And uh, this was pretty heinous to record and get all this gameplay because basically you're switching out between like 10 different weapons and trading out attachments and just spraying at a wall for like 3 hours. So if you guys would leave a like if you do appreciate it or if you did learn something that, that would be awesome. But anyways let's hop right into the video. So we've got two new weapon attachments, the extended barrel and the muzzle brake. We're going to start off with the extended barrel. This is going to give you a little bit more recoil, but it's also going to give you more damage, about 10 to 20% at longer ranges. So you can put this thing on the 416 carbine, the Beretta M12, the C8 SFW, the Mac 11, the P90, the Para 308, the R4C, the 9mm C1, the UMP45, and the MK17 CQB. Up next is of course the muzzle brake, and this is going to be amazing for semi-automatic weapons and pistols. It's going to diminish your first shot recoil, so that's going to make it a lot better to tap fire, or for things like pistols or DMRs, it's just going to make them all around better. So this is going to be able to go on the G36C, the R4C, the MP7, the SR25, MK17, C8 SFW, the cameras, the UMP45, MP5, P90, AK12, OTS03, the 5.52 Commando, the 4.16 Carbine, the 9x19 BSN, the MP5K, the FMG9, the AR33, LA5A2, 5.56 XI, the F2, the 4.17, and the MPX. So a lot more guns are able to get the muzzle brake than the long barrel, and the long barrel is a little bit more situational. So from the testing that we did with Ash and Caviera, what we did is we set up Ash with or without the extended barrel on one side of the plane, Caviera on the other, and then we put it to semi-auto to just kind of precisely find how many body shots it would take to kill. And without the extended barrel, it was doing about 23 damage to center mass. And then with the extended barrel, it was doing about 27 damage to center mass. So that's the difference between a four and a five shot kill. And that could be a huge difference when you're actually in a game. But once again, it is more situational. If you are gonna play a bit longer range supportive role, I'd probably give it a try. It's not something you're gonna to wanna to just roll with as much as you would like the muzzle break, but it is something that's very situational. So with all this said, what is the best attachment to use? Well, if you're going for range, the extended barrel is going to be pretty awesome for that extra damage, but if you want something that's just generally a really nice controllable recoil pattern, I'd recommend either the muzzle brake, if you can use it, or the flash hider. The flash hider was actually really surprising at how well it was doing. It's pretty linear in terms of its patterns, and it's also one of the best attachments when it comes to burst fire. So that's just seconded by the muzzle brake. Probably the best order would just be a muzzle brake, flash hider, the compensator is okay, and then you've got your suppressor, heavy barrel, and no attachment whatsoever. So that's the order I would put them in. It is a little bit interchangeable, it really just depends on what weapon you're using, and also just the random number generator, because it is a little bit random, and they do just have a ton of different spray patterns. But anyways, the last thing I wanted to talk about is the comparison of visual effects between no attachment, the flash hider, and the suppressor. The suppressor is the best for completely getting rid of not only the visual component, but also the sound, obviously, that's the whole point. So anyways, this first clip is with the R4C with no attachment, he's just gonna be kind of spraying around. You'll see there's a pretty decent amount of muzzle flash, smoke, you can see the tracers going across the screen, and uh, it's pretty similar in first person view, you can see there's a lot of flashing and smoke everywhere. Then when we go to the flash hider, this actually really doesn't hide your flash. It makes it a little bit smaller and it also gets rid of a lot of the smoke, which is gonna be kind of nice. The tracers, however, are still there or that kind of trail behind each bullet is still gonna be there. And then finally, we have the suppressor, which pretty much gets rid of all the muzzle flash and all the muzzle smoke. However, the tracers are still going to be pretty visible. I swear they got rid of this with the suppressor, but I guess it's back, so there's still going to be tracer rounds or the vapor trail behind. But it is going to greatly reduce all of your sound, and you're not going to have any flash or smoke coming out of your muzzle. So... Kind of a cool thing to think of if you do want to, you know, do some tactical maneuvers. I don't know what the fuck you're doing, but anyways, that is the attachment guide. So overall, best gadget I would probably say is just the muzzle brake followed by the flash hider. And other than that, it's really up to you. So if this video did help you out, feel free to leave a like down below. We really appreciate it when you guys show your support. Subscribe if you're not already for more of these types of videos. And if you do have any video suggestions for, you know, pro tips or maybe ways to use the impact grenades specially or just really anything, if you guys want some guides or some videos on it, 
feel free to leave those down in the comments below. But anyways, guys, until tomorrow, stay buttery.